Hello, it's Tuesday, July 30th, and I'm actually starting another vlog because I have book mail, but um, I probably wouldn't be starting a vlog otherwise because I'm exhausted from the reading rush. It's a good week, but like, it can be very burning out. But I have a package, and I'm so excited for this package because it is... Ah, it's the Merciful Crow! Oh my goodness. Oh my god, I can't believe I actually have this book. I read the arc of it. Oh, oh, did my dust jacket come upside down? No, oh no. It's interesting that it is upside down. The map is upside down on the front end page, and I don't know if that's a mistake or not. Oh, but there's a little crow on the front. And now we have a map. I... Why, why is it upside down? <laughs> That's so confusing. Anyways, still love the book. So, um, yeah. Oh, goodness. I loved this book. I read an arc. I got it at BookCon. And, like, it was honestly a surprise. I actually had not heard of it before BookCon. And, like, I freaking loved it. It was so good. So well done. Just, like, it's a cool, like, cast-based system with these birthrights. And then... Like we have magical plagues and teeth magic and just an awesome book. And then now I have my Book of the Month YA package. I am an affiliate for Book of the Month YA. So if you use my link and the little code down in the description, you can get your first box for $10. And they have always a really great selection of books. And I'm excited to open this month's book. Bum, 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 bum. I also just love the fact that it comes in a pink box. That's amazing. Oh, I have it. Oh, it's so cute. I love their boxes. It says, read your heart out. And then this is the way that was packaged. I got House of Salt and Sorrows. Oh, yes. I'm so excited. It comes like so well packaged that like I'm not afraid of it ever getting ruined in the mail. You know, like from Amazon, it kind of feels a little bit sketchy, but this has like, you know, share the love. Oh, Oh, cool. And it comes with a bookmark. That's awesome. This is House of Salt and Sorrows, and it's a retelling of the 12 Dancing Princesses. On the back, it says once there were 12 of us. And I always love that Book of the Month has like little personalized touches. So it's like got the little Book of the Month heart here, and the thing up here, and here. And I believe on, yeah, it has it here too. So it's really cool that they go and put all of these touches onto the books that they are publishing and what's really cool about this is the chapter headings have an octopus on them that's cool i've heard that it's like very um atmospheric and just a good book and i'm just so excited i get to work with them and i get to get cool books like this because i was really excited about this title and when i saw that that's what i would be getting this month in my box i was just excited but in terms of reading, so because the reading rush exhausted me, I have not really read anything except I started an audiobook and it's kind of nice. Like I was in a really big audiobook slump for like all of June. I wasn't really listening, but the reading rush got me back into audiobooks because they're just great for my commute. And I'm right now listening to Bright We Burn by Kirsten White, which is the third book in the Conqueror Saga, which is End I Darken is the first book. And it's a gender bent retelling of Vlad the Impaler. Really awesome. It's a very rich historical fiction. There's not a lot of historical fiction that captures my attention in YA, but this series is really good. And I'm loving the audiobooks. The narrator is fantastic. So audiobook is definitely a good way to go for this series. And I'm just trying to find... The way that I want to use my audiobooks are for books that I'm interested in but I don't already own because I just feel bad paying for an audiobook that I already paid for a physical book of. So I'm trying to kind of like decide how I want to split up like whether I read an audiobook of a book or a physical book of it and it's just going to be based on like the reviews and stuff I've heard of it or like also just that I'm trying to not buy as many books because... I don't have space and I want to save some money. I do also like to read um, audiobooks for rereads sometimes. I think it's a really fun way to experience a favorite in a different format. So like I'm going to be reading Sorcery of Thorns on the audiobook format because it's like my favorite book ever. And then this way I can be rereading it on my commute and then reading another book physically at the same time. And I think I also want to do an audiobook reread of Carry On, which is just the book that makes my heart so warm right before 
um, Wayward Son comes out. So that like maybe like the week or so leading up to when I get Wayward Son in the mail, I'll be reading Carry On and it's just such a cute audiobook. Okay, that's it for now. I'm really tired. I would like to go to bed. See ya. Hello, I figured I'd do a little clip now. It is Friday, August 2nd. So last night I did the live show for Wicked Saints and it was so much fun. And I'm excited to talk about Sorcery of Thorns because I think we're gonna have a really interesting conversation about it. Right now I'm listening to the audiobook for Bright Me Burn and I am 64% of the way through. So I'll finish it either like today or Monday because I don't really listen to audiobooks over the weekend. And then after that, I think the next one I'm gonna listen to is The Crown's Game because that just came through off my hold on Libby. And then for the book that I'm reading, I'm reading Feast of Sparks by Sierra Simone, which is the sequel to Lesson of Thorns. Very highly anticipated. I'm reading out my Kindle. I love my Kindle. I only got it a few months ago, but it's changed my life. I like have all these things that I like never thought I would be into now that I'm into because of booktube, like audiobooks, I would have probably never picked up an audiobook were it not for booktube and audiobooks are amazing. They're such a great way to experience the story. And then my Kindle as well. I was very anti-Kindle and now I realize the benefits of a Kindle and how amazing it is to have one. It's Saturday, August 3rd, and it's already pretty late in the day. It's almost 5 p.m., um, but I've just been spending today relaxing, reading a feast for sparks on my kindle i'm 43 percent of the way through and now i've decided i really want to work on some video ideas for tube and i always for my videos like sit down and make sure that i have stuff run out to say because i just think it makes the filming process a lot easier but sometimes i get really distracted like trying to do that on my couch or like just being in my apartment so there is a new cafe that just opened up down the road for me so i'm gonna go there and sit and try and get that done i also have this new lily pulitzer planner that i got and i really want to start filling it out because i love it so much i am obsessed with like the lavender colors i've been getting this planner since like 2014 it's my favorite planner i don't use a bullet journal for planning only for like reading stuff i like having like a more structured planner like that um, I think my first read is going to be A Heart, So Fierce and Broken, and this one is very big, but I think that I'm just going to be like so enamored with it that I'm going to fly through it. I'm so excited to have this arc, like I can't believe it. I just like have it in my hands, and I love the way it feels in my hands. I'm so excited. So I'm going to bring this with to the cafe with me and maybe start that. Like I'm not trying to get too far in it today, but I also got some exciting book mails. I'm on a bunch of arc trading groups, and I have a few arcs that... Are from BookCon that I'm not really interested in and so I was trying to trade them and I haven't really had that much luck but there was someone named Alexa who I asked to trade with and she said that she wasn't interested in my books but she liked my channel so she was going to send an arc my way and so thank you so much Alexa for sending it to me it means a lot because I'm so excited for this book and that is going to be a river of royal blood by amanda joy so now i have an arc of this and this was a potential in my tbr for august i think i have like a few non-arcs on my arc august tbr like a feast for sparks and the storm crow just so i could fit things into my newts which i'm also doing i am really going to try and focus on just reading my arcs that i have i just like there's something about arcs and the way that they feel like I just love them so much and I'm so grateful to have these advanced copies and try and get out like good reviews and if I like this cafe that I'll be in like I'll probably use that for going there and like sitting down writing reviews on the weekends or something like that because it could be fun. Hello so it's later on Saturday and I've been reading Feast of Sparks all day and as I was reading I saw that there was controversy and that many people were giving it one star because of the last 10% of the book and that has made me very nervous. I'm at 67% so far and I mean so far so good but like what is gonna go horribly wrong enough that this ending is getting like really horrible ratings from everyone that's read it so far and people on Twitter are like sorry if I you know recommend A Lesson of Thorns to you like the sequel's bad blah 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 and I'm like what is gonna happen? I don't know. I wanted to bullet journal and like work on some booktube stuff and then go back to the book, but I just don't think that I can stop because my curiosity about the ending is just killing me. I just got to the part three marker and I have a third left. So I will report back in a little bit and see what the conclusion is. So I finished and confused 
as to the last chapter and why the book took the turn that it did with that ending, I just don't really see where it's going. I don't really know what I want to rate it because I enjoyed it up until literally the last page. So I really don't know what to think. I don't. And now it's midnight. And um, yeah, I wanted to do some bullet journaling. So I'm probably going to do that now, but just like, I'm just very confused. I just got back from work and I'm ready to read. I finished today on my lunch break, Bright We Burn by Kirsten White. I picked up this audiobook last week. The first book was like a four star. Second book, maybe like a 3.5 star. And this last book was a complete five star. I think it was just a perfect ending and it's a really cool historical fiction YA book. I just love the whole aspect of a gender bent Vlad the Impaler retelling because we have this literally like fierce and badass but like also kind of scary main character and it just has to do a lot with commentaries on like politics and gender especially back in the olden days and you learn a little bit more about the Ottoman Empire and all of the Slavic states so it's a really cool series. I got my coffee of Serpent and Dove. I'm so excited. I definitely want to read this one before it comes out. This was one of the most highly contested arcs at BookCon and I got it because Melissa got it at Epic Reads Day so did Maddie and Maddie already had a copy from BookCon so she gave it to Melissa to give to Alex to give to me and it has made its way back and I'm excited. I like kind of want to dive into this one right now but I'm in a buddy read group chat with a bunch of people that are reading A Curse of Dark and Lonely so I feel like obligated to start Hearts of Fierce and Broken which is where I should be starting for the arc august and um, the buddy read even though they're reading the first book i'm reading the second book we're just like screaming our thoughts about this series <sighs> which is totally fine i feel like once i start it i'm gonna like love it but i just I'm like, oh i gotta read my arcs that are like coming out sooner first but i don't i don't have to i can just read whatever i want which also after all these readathons i feel like i've been feeling this pressure to just like read 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 as much as possible so i'm just like chilling and taking my time and just reading as much as i enjoy each day because otherwise i'm gonna drive myself crazy then next last night i read two stories in language of thorns so i started this book literally in february read like maybe two or three stories and never finished the rest and it's such like a beautiful cool little whimsical book and i was just like all right i need to get this off of my goodreads because it's literally been on there for months and i hate having like unfinished books and i didn't want to dnf it so i have just one story left to 
tonight that I will probably read and then I will start a Heart So Fierce and Broken. I don't know how much time I'm going to really have after that because I do need to go to the gym and end the video for tomorrow. Then, in terms of my audiobooks, can you stop creeping in the background? Then, in terms of audiobooks, I have been getting back into them. Like I said, I was kind of like not listening to them for a while, but I got on Libby, The Crown Game by Evelyn Skye. So I just decided to start it and I didn't realize it's like an alternate 1800s Russia with magic. So it's pretty cool. It's a pretty long audiobook. I don't listen to audiobooks on super high speed because sometimes I feel like I miss things if it's too fast and I'm not paying complete contention, which I sometimes don't because I'm listening to them while I travel. And again, I'm not trying to like rush through audiobooks. So I've been trying to use a combination of Libby and Scribd. Uh, you can use my Scribd link if you want or get Libby through your library. And I'm looking at other options. I did have Audible for a time, but it's just a lot to pay $15 a month for one book. And Scribd does limit you on audiobooks sometimes, but at least you get like two or three for $10 a month. Well, I think it's usually like three before they start to limit you. Downloaded. You can listen to a lot on Wi-Fi. And then it doesn't limit you, but I download them because I, I travel. I listen to them. But I, yeah, and I have multiple library cards and and my Florida library card and then I have like a Boston library card that I got online and because it was online I think you only get it for the first six months so now I need to go and get one like in person for the Cambridge library which wait this one might be the Cambridge library I don't know it doesn't say what county the library or like what town the library is on my Libby app so I think I have to Go. I, I do want to go in person and get like a legit library card. Oh, and also like I recorded myself doing this, but I am just freaking in love with the way my August spread came out. Love. My mom actually suggested a shooting star theme because August, there's a big shooting star meteor shower every August. It's the Mercedes meteor shower, meteor shower. So we would always watch it. I have a package and it's from Macmillan and I don't know what's in it, so let's open it up. Mm -hmm. Anything that I get, I'll be happy with. Ooh. <gasps> no! Oh God, oh my God, I have it. <gasps> I'm dying, oh my God. I love Trisha Levenseller, stop. Oh my god, I love her and this book sounds so cool. What the heck? Oh my god. I can't believe I have this. I've read all of her books and I've adored them. Alessandra has to woo the Shadow King, marry him, and then kill him and take the kingdom for herself. And knowing Trisha Levendiller's writing and the witty banter and the emotional character arcs, like, oh, it's gonna be so good. Oh my, I can't believe I got this. I just recently started reaching out to more publishers for arcs because i've decided that i'm getting more involved in book reviews and stuff that that's something i want to do and like i'm literally i'm shook right now oh my god no way oh my god i'm so excited about this please if you have not read her other books daughter of the pirate king and daughter of the siren queen and i also love warrior of the wild i need to get a copy of that eventually like and now i can add this to my collab <laughs> Oh my god, I can't believe I have this. I'm so excited. Oh my god, thank you so much to Macmillan for sending this to me. I didn't think I was gonna get a copy. Oh my god. Oh my god, it says in the dedication, it says, I can't think of anyone more deserving of the Slytherin romance. It's a Slytherin romance. Oh my god. I'm dead. This book killed me. And now I'm just reading Hearts of Fierce and Broken. I'm on page 55. I hope to read another 100 pages tonight, I think. And I have been reading A Heart So Fierce and Broken all night. And I'm on page 206. Yesterday I was on like 125. So I made some good headway. I'm getting so obsessed with this book. If I didn't have to get up early for work in the morning, like I could sit down and finish this all like pretty quickly. Maybe I'll finish it tomorrow. Who knows? yeah so like this book is so good like if you loved gray in the first book you're going to love this one because it's all gray and i love this new character that we are meeting leah mara which is the daughter of the enemy queen from the first book and like i ship them so hard at this point and 
I really, really enjoying it. Then I am reading The Crown's Game by Evelyn Sky on audio on Libby and I'm like 38% of the way and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's Russian inspired. Um, the accents are really good. A very exciting package. I participated in a trade with a friend. So let's open it up. I'm just struggling to get this open. Okay. So much bubble wrap. I got the Owl Creed version of Sorcery of Thorns. This is from Kendra over at Kendra Cuss, and we are in the Overhead Book Club together. Oh, oh, and I got the print and the sticker too. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Thank you so much. So I did a trade with Kendra since we are reading this for our August Overhead Book Club pick. She said since I this was my favorite book that she would just give me the Owl Crate one so I could collect it and I sent her the original hardcover and oh my god I'm so excited to get this because it's literally impossible to find elsewise. Thank you so much Kendra. I am loving this. It's Saturday and I'm very excited because I'm about to go and see the BTS Bring the Soul movie. day we were out and about exploring the city for a while but it was really fun and the movie was amazing and just put me in my feels my bts feels and now i'm home reading a heart so fierce and broken and i'm literally loving this so far i'm on page 300 and i have like it's maybe 150 more pages and like the plot so good if you are a fan of gray this is gray's book and you're going to love it like i forgot how much i loved him and then this book is just making me feel all the things gray is amazing he's the best and then my gray feels my plan is it's like 11 30 now i actually fell asleep for a little bit but i got back up because i really I want to read this book. I'm actually tabbing it even though it's an arc. I'm really just in love with it. Just, I don't know, something about her writing pulls you in and the heartstrings are being pulled. I love the new character, Leah Mora. She's awesome and so badass. Different from Harper. Definitely has a different feel as a character, but I still adore her equally. And I don't know, it's just really good so far. And I know that Curse of Dark and Lonely is like a lot of people's favorite books, mine included. It's definitely one of my faves, and this sequel so far is delivering on everything that I was hoping for in the second book. The thing that just happened in this book, oh my god. It was just like one line, you know like that plot twist that's like one line when someone says something that you're like not expecting, and you're like, what? That's literally what just happened? Like, oh my god, okay. It's almost two in the morning, but I can't stop reading because literally what is going on? I have maybe 30 pages left and there's definitely no way that this is like wrapping up in terms of the larger overarching plot. And I know that there was a book deal sign for books three and four. So I think we're getting more. Oh my God. Oh my God. The ending of this book literally has me screaming wow i need the next one now and this one doesn't even come out until february or january so uh 2021 where are you at <laughs> it's so good it's sunday and i have received a package that i'm very excited for what is in here is goodness and nostalgia and everything I've been wanting in life, like, just, I'm so excited. It's my Tamagotchi on. 
Oh my god, I can't believe they came out with a new Tamagotchi after all of these years. Oh my god, it's so cute. Look at it. If you didn't know, Tamagotchis were literally my whole childhood. I was so obsessed with them. I had a binder where I kept Tamagotchi research and I had every version. I even got some from Japan. So the fact that like I have this Tamagotchi now, I'm so excited. Oh my God. And the app is so cute. I've already been on it because you can go on it like without a Tamagotchi. I did a clip last night, but I finished the Hearts of Fierce and Broken and like, wow, what a book. I love this just as much as the first one, if not even more, like it was just so good. And then at the end, it was just like, it just hit me, you know? And ugh, oh my god, it, there were so many twists and turns that were really good. And I'm so happy that I have that arc and I got to read it early. But now that means I have to wait like a year and a half for the next one. So, uh... <sighs> I've been bullet journaling like a lot over the past two weeks. So I just wanted to do a quick flip through of everything that I've pretty much done during this vlog. This one might have been in a previous spread, but this is the most anticipated books of late 2019. I had one in the beginning of the year, but a lot of these titles weren't announced yet. Then this is my arc tracker with physical arcs that I have and electronic arcs that I have. Next is my July wrap-up spread. The theme was 4th of July. And the second page, these doodles were really fun to do. Next is my August spread, and I'm literally in love with how this came out. I just love the sparkly black tape and silver tape and the whole celestial theme. Then the next page, I did a reading tracker for physical and audio reading, and I just like love the whole planetary theme. It's so cool. Then on the next page, we have, I did a quote page, and I feel like I'm slowly but surely tapping into my artistic side because this actually came out okay and I had doubts. It does not really showing up too well on camera, but there is like metallic gold that says solemnly swear. Then we have the start of my newt spread. So this is like the letter from Professor, Professor McGonagall. And then we flip the page and these are the readathon prompts. And then this is my spread for the readathon itself, listing out all of the prompts that I need for Magizoologist and like a space to fill in with the book because I don't want to set in stone what book I'm going to read for each challenge. And that's it for right now. So now that we are at the end of the vlog, I wanted to do like a little wrap up of things that I've hauled and things that I have read just because I think it will help me keep track of like what is going on in the vlog. For the wrap up haul of things that I've gotten throughout the course of the vlog, I think the first thing was The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen in which I read this arc in the Book Junkie Trials beginning of July. Freaking loved it so much. Five stars. So I of course had to get the finished copy. I'm just so excited to support the author because she's amazing and I think she might know who she is because Soleil mentioned me and Maddie to her at her signing and she knew us as the merciful hoes. Then next I got my book of the month for August which is House of Salt and Sorrows. I do want to get to this one soon. <laughs> I say that about every book but like uh, so many books to read. Then next I think is that I got this in the mail from Alexa. This looks like an awesome book and hopefully I get to it during our August. The fact that I have the Owl Crate Sorcery of Thorns here with me, I decided I wanted to start collecting this book, of course, after it was too late to get the Owl Crate and Fairy Loot versions, which I'm still on the hunt for a Fairy Loot version. If anyone knows where to find one for a decent price, so much. Like, I truly appreciate this that I can, like, have this in my collection now because Sorcery of Thorns is literally one of my favorite books ever, and I just want to collect them all. Ooh, under the dust jacket, it's purple. I don't know, there's just something about being able to collect a bunch of editions of books that like really touch you in some way. It's just like the best feeling ever and oh my god, I have it. Then I got Serpent and Dove, I think in this reading vlog. Did I even talk about this? I think I did. I don't know. I can't remember anymore. 
I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. So, so far all of the ARCs that I've gotten are like through other people or at BookCon or whatever, but I got the first ever ARC that I've requested and that is The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenzeller, which, oh my goodness. I literally, when I found it in the mail, was like so emotional. I mean, I'm sure that that clip just shows like what I was feeling in the moment, but I was overwhelmed, overjoyed, and this one doesn't come out until February, so I'm definitely gonna read it before then so I can get a review up and probably scream about my love for this book because it just seems so freaking cool. And then in terms of reading, I was feeling a little like meh after the reading rush of the book directly trials because it was just like go 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 in terms of reading and filling prompts and stuff i started out the month reading an audiobook which is bright we burn by kirsten white which is the third in the conquerors saga which includes and i darken now i rise and then the last one bright we burn it was phenomenal i really love that series on audio and it's just the coolest historical fiction gender bent retelling ever then I read two stories in Language of Thorns, so I was at 40% for like ever in this book, and now I just have one short story left. I hopefully will get to it soon. But then next I started the audiobook for Crown's Game by Evelyn Skye, which I have been using Libby again. I am actually really enjoying this one so far. I haven't talked about it as much, but I'm at 63%. It's like a magical competition, and it's just like very atmospheric and very very Russian if you like Russian culture and like accurate representation of Russian culture because I know it's very important to Soleil I think you'll really enjoy it I'm it's basically like Russia but if there was like magic that nobody knew about that was secretly there and it's a whole competition on and to see like who can be the enchanter the imperial enchanter and their magic is very beautiful and they do things to like beautify the city and it's just like very like very cool. Oh, and the other thing that I hauled is my Tamagotchi. I'm literally so obsessed. Like, Tamagotchis are life. If you have a Tamagotchi on, like, please let me know your friend code so we can be friends. I finished A Hearts of Fierce and Broken, and wow, I loved this. And there were just some things that happened that truly shocked me, and I was just like screaming about it because, wow, she really set up that the third book is going to be something awesome and i can't wait the side characters taiko and isaac can like i just i love them taiko must be protected at all costs that's all i'm gonna say i can't wait for you guys to meet him when you read this book and like i tabbed it i've never tabbed an arc before like ugh. I just have so many feels with this series. That is enough for this vlog. I would like to go to bed. So have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.